All right, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask that you turn to Psalms, Psalms 34. Uh, while you're turning there, I uh, remind you always to pray for me as your pastor, uh, that I would be found preaching exactly what I ought to be preaching. You know, uh, 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 had a friend who is of a different denomination, and they had a new pastor. And uh, they said all they were doing was going through from one side to the other side of a book about this group. Uh, you know, that's not much leadership from, from God, is it? Not this book, just a book about this group of people. Mm -hmm. And I won't use names, but... Um, that's not much. That's not much preaching, is it? No. Psalms 34, in the very first verse, this says the Psalm of David: "I will bless the Lord at times; His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall take her boast in the Lord; the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me." And let us exalt his name together. Amen. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto me, and they were and they were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Amen. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word this morning. What a gift it is to your people to have this book before us. We praise you for that. Lord, we pray for the people in other uh, languages that don't have the benefit of this book that lays before me this morning. And we pray that you might send them a Bible that way. God, we pray this morning that you would honor your word, Lord God, that you would uh, bless it to the true believers that are here before us. God, help the lost, because without you there is nothing that could be done. But we pray that you might speak life to them, Lord. Allow us to set malice aside this morning, that we not be angry with anybody, but rather that we would be centered in on you. God, honor your word with your spirit, and we'd be faithful to praise you for it, for it's in Christ's name we ask. Amen. 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 Now, uh, maybe some not-so-familiar uh, scriptures. There are pieces that is pulled out of this sonnet that are used in hymns that we all know. But I don't know that I've ever heard this just in of itself preached upon. And, and when, I, uh, when I looked at it, and when I looked at it uh, as for consideration, I saw where it had, it had been taught on because I make little notes in my Bible one time. Uh, one time, and I've had this Bible 10 years, that I've actually heard something uh, preached or taught from this, this piece of Scripture. And when I think of that, have you ever thought of how much of the Word of God that you've not accessed, that you've not read, uh, that you've not prayerfully read? Uh, and you know, I, I think it's a great thing, and I've never been able to adhere to it, uh, but one time that there are these little calendars you can get that you can read the whole Bible in one year. Now, if you want to do that, be dedicated to it because it's a lot of reading. But on the very same token, I'd rather read a little bit in prayer than read the whole thing like I was reading a Harlequin romance. I would rather know that God was leading me and I knew that what I was reading uh, belonged to him. So in the very first verse, the psalmist David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, that is a mouthful to say because it's easy to say and hard to do. When, when someone's coming out against you, it's hard to bless that time. When, when someone died, we just uh, yesterday uh, recognized uh, uh, the attack at Pearl Harbor. You know what? That's almost 80 years ago, and it's still very seared in many people's mind the day that we were hit at Pearl Harbor. You know that day that that happened, I bet it was hard to bless the Lord, wasn't it? I bet it the day that that happened, 
Uh, and even here we are eight, almost 80 years later, it's very hard to say, blessed be the name of the Lord on that day, but that's what we were to do. You know, it, it's by no accident whatsoever what happened at Pearl Harbor or any other day in history was accident, and so we are to bless the Lord. Good news, bad news, mediocre news, I will bless the Lord at all at all times, he says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Praise him, you know, we, we, we sing that song that Sonny Crosby wrote, praise him, praise him, uh, our blessed redeemer. Well, let me ask you this, what have you done this week to praise the Lord? I mean, really. Yeah. Uh, what have you done? And you know, uh, singing like I do, you got to be careful. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a drug. You got to, you got to use it very carefully. And, and so, you know, and I was going down the my, my first duty at work every every morning when I get there, I grab my clipboard and go around the whole building, being sure that all the residents are there. And that sounds crazy. I don't mean that they that they leave the nursing home, but they might have been transferred out uh, to a hospital. And one of my jobs is to be is to count heads. And the other day I was walking through there, and, and I, I, again, I wasn't even noticing. I was just looking at people, and they said, what are you singing? And I thought, uh-oh. You know, uh, you caught me. And what I, uh, and I didn't even, I mean, I, I was somewhere else, I guess. And I said, I don't know. And they said, well, you're singing Amazing Grace. And, you know, I, and I said, well, I'll stop. I, uh, uh, but the thing of it is, they should be continually on our uh, a sense of praise. Listen, you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ did something that no other, uh, and not a man, that no other being could possibly do and became the answer to sin. No, not, not any other, not even the Holy Ghost, uh, God, Jehovah, nobody could fulfill that office but the person of the Son of God. That's it. And, and we ought to be able to praise Him, and we ought to be able to praise Him at all times, right on the tip of our tongue, something good to say of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 2, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. You know, uh, you got to be real careful about that one because, you know, uh, preaching, singing, things that you do on behalf of God, if you're not very careful, you'll get carnal on that. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, Brother Lafferty, I really enjoyed uh, that, that message. And you better very carefully say, well, give God praise for it. And when you say, you know, that's easy to say. That's four words. Give God praise for it. Amen. But it's a whole lot harder to mean it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole lot. I, I'll never forget this. I don't think if I live to be 100. Uh, I preached at the conference at Paducah. I think it was the last time I ever preached there, but I'm not sure. It might have been the time before that. met a young lady named uh, Sarah Elizabeth Stanfield. And uh, we were... Uh, we were, I, I preached, I got down, and her daddy, I thought he was going to attack me, he came running from the back of the church. And uh, he said, uh, and I, again, I never even met the man, I didn't know who he was. And he introduced himself and said, I enjoyed that message, I hadn't heard preaching like that in years. And it was very, it was very difficult not to, not to boast and to take the right attitude. So the next time you think that you've done something that's competent, you remember that everything that you've done is because of the goodness of Christ. And, and so the psalmist David said, that's where I'm going to take my boast. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now, you know, when, uh, when you say, I'll make my boast in the Lord, the Lord did it, God did it. Uh, the humble will understand that. But the prideful will not. The prideful will say, well, you did it. Uh, you're the one that said it. You're the one that sang it. What have you. But the ones that understand the nature of God will understand that as well. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now, in verse 3, he, uh, he says a mouthful. Oh, magnify, illuminate, uh, 
make clear, see the Lord clearly in me. Right. Now that's a wonderful, wonderful prayer to pray, but if you pray it, you better mean it. Because, see, you don't know what, what sort of things he's going to do to magnify himself in you. Is that right? You know, uh, he may put you in some pretty precarious situations. He may put you in a situation of loss. Uh, you know, I heard one time, and, uh, and I haven't had to experience this, and and, and so I can't, I can't be critical at the same time, though I do know this much about it. I know when it was, I won't tell you because I don't want to name names on, uh, uh, on the computer, but at the same time, I preached a young boy's funeral. I think he was 11 or 12. And uh, uh, his mother said, the devil took him from me. Well, most certainly he did not. The Bible teaches me that God appointed our days and so the only conclusion I came to is his, his days were up, and that was what, after the ordination of God. You know what? I believe as a people, we give the devil a lot more credit than he had, than is due him. Because, see, if we serve a sovereign God, a God that is above all, all over all, and in control of all, and he certainly is, what does the devil have to do with it? And you think about the attacks on Job. Every time God said, you can go this far, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we find then, and as the Lord's people, we need to uh, use every situation and magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. You know, exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exalt the name of the Holy Ghost. Every name that we can think of. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, uh, Yahweh, lift his name up for exactly what it is. And you know, we live in a modern day today. The thing that disturbs me is this. You know, people are getting offended at the name of Jesus. You know, if you look at your King James Bible and see how many times Jesus appears, that's a pretty good name to use. Now, that, that's something noteworthy. Uh, and, and so we as the Lord's people, we need to magnify him and lift his name up on every opportunity and every occasion that we might. Verse 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. Now, what do we like to be delivered from? Everything. He didn't say he delivered me from all my troubles, although at one time he does say that. But you know, a deliverance from trouble is very temporal in this world. Because see, when the sun comes up, it's going to be no set problems. You said, you know, as a middle-aged man now, I have health problems that I didn't have when I was a young man. And I'm sure if the Lord doesn't return, his appointed day doesn't arrive in, in the next 30 years, if I'm still living, I'll have, I'll have aches and pains that I don't even know about right now. There'll be a new set of problems. So what David received was an understanding. See, what, what David received wasn't a relief from problems because I believe in the sin nature that we live in right now, that's an impossibility that we're always going to have problems, but you don't have to be fearful of them. We do not have to be afraid. You know what? We live in a day where people are taught to be afraid from day one. Now, you, you can be cautious, and especially my girls... They know you don't get away from me in a big crowd. Young one, old one, all of them together, you stay close to daddy. That's just being wise, but you don't have to live in fear. There, there's no reason for us to walk around and wonder what the next day is going to bring. You, 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 know, you know what happens when you do that? that that's, it becomes all-consuming, and that's all you do. That's all you do is set the stress about what tomorrow will be. You, you, you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Whatever God ordained it to be. That's all that's going to happen. 
And, and I can say, like the first of the psalm says, blessed be the name of the Lord, or I can get mad and get sad about it, right? I, I've really got two choices. And, and, and so we as Lord's people, knowing that He is sovereign, and it's all under His feet, then certainly all we should have to do is, is, is praise Him for it. Verse 5. They looked unto Him and were, and, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Uh, you know, uh, I don't hear a whole lot of people cry, crying out to the Lord anymore. Do you? Uh, I really don't. Uh, when when troubles come, they have some kind of carnal solution to it, don't they? Uh, nothing wrong with doctors. Uh, I've made my living from health care all my life. But at the same time, there's no healing in doctors. They're smart men, ladies. They, they, they know a lot of things to do, but divine healing is only... They're, they're, just, a, they're just a tool in the master's hand. Uh, all healing comes from God. Right. And, 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 and David begins to realize this and understands the person of God exactly for whom he is, and he gives him great praise. Uh, saved him out of all his troubles. Now, with that said, again, there was a new set of troubles tomorrow. Everybody, when, when, I, I, when I was a kid, I went to public school, and, and we couldn't wait. Back then, you got out of school mid-May, just about mid-May every year. Sometimes you had to go toward the end of May, and, and you were good to go to late August. We got all those summer months off. And, man, we would be glad. And, and, and my sister was a very smart girl, and she, uh, I, I said, uh, Judy, when I get off the bus, I'm going to rip up this uh, report card, and I'm done for another year. And she goes, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, all right. So we got, we got off the bus, and I was ripping mine up. And I looked over there. I wanted to throw a rock at her. She ripped hers in two. And I know why. She wanted Mama to see it, because she always made better grades than I did. And, uh, uh, but you know what? That fall, we both had to go back, didn't we? See, it, it wasn't a long-term solution. And it's exactly like us. Sun's coming up tomorrow. And you know what? You may get a little bad news. But you know what? If you get bad news, God's still on the throne. Amen. And, and, and there's nothing to stress about. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, uh, because uh, the Bible says, and you know, uh, we just got to get back to believe in this book. The Bible says in the New Testament that, that God, that uh, he doeth all things well. Everything he does is good. Now, me and you, uh, because of the carnality of our flesh, we do some things good, some things bad. We do some things for our own benefit and some things for the benefit of others. But God does all things good. You can't, you can't imagine one thing, and it might be devastating you, but I'll guarantee you it is for your best benefit whatsoever. Yeah. And it may take you years to see it, but I'll guarantee you that that's exactly how it is. And so the psalmist David understood that. Verse 7, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. What a wonderful, wonderful thing if we could get this little eye open just long enough. You know, that was Elijah's prayer for his servant, wasn't it? Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And it said that the hills and the hollows were full of angels at their disposal at any minute, at any time. And here we see, it says that they're encamped all around about us. You know, there's not one... Now, there'll be services that you'll miss at New Testament. Wednesday night, uh, special holidays, all that stuff. But you know what? This, this is true. There, there's, there's, there, is, there are beings more faithful than your pastor. And that is the angels that show up. And just as surely as the angels show up, 
the demons do too. Right. Uh, they're encamped all around about us. You know, uh, what, what did he say to the church? Was it at Laodicea? He says, I know where Satan's seat is. He goes, I know exactly where he sits. <laughs> Heard a preacher saying, that's preaching that one time. He said, I do too. She sits right beside me. <laughs> and, uh, but when we begin to think about that, what a marvel, what a blessing it is just to be able to come to church, isn't it? Yes. Just to be able to meet with God's people and knowing that it's not just a routine. Uh, you know, uh, somebody say, you know, why do you go to church? <laughs> Could, one thing and nothing else, I want to be where there, that there's angels camped all around me in every situation and every time at home and good news and bad news. The Bible says here, they're camping all around me. They're protecting me at the disposal of the Lord God. The angel of the Lord encampeth all and campeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Now, I want you to see the psalmist David says, you know, you never know how something good is, how good something is, until you taste it. It may smell good, it may be appealing to the, the eye, but unless you taste it, you can't, you, you can't say you've experienced it. See, we need experiences, don't we? We need experiences to know how good God is. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I would, uh, I would give, and I really mean this. I would give my hand if Aaron hadn't lost his, because I, I'm about done with mine. But you know what? That's an experience you too will never forget. Uh, and you know what? God brought you out on the under, other side, did He not? Mm -hmm. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But now, when you say that, be sure that you want to taste it. Be sure that you really want that. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of times, uh, we uh, <laughs> we say we want it until it begins to happen. And you know, have you ever tasted something that looked really, really good? And when you got it in your mouth, you're like, "Oh, what have I done now?" And, and you wanna you wanna spit it out. And, you know, uh, people can eat some crazy things. And uh, what, what we think is good southern food, uh, other people might not think it's quite as good, you know what I'm saying? And I, I've tasted some pretty, pretty sad food in my lifetime. And uh, once it's in your mouth, what are you going to do with it? It's insult to spit it out, is it not? The only thing you can do is swallow it. And then you might be saying this, polite southern way, well, I believe I've had all I want right now. Uh, but you got to get the bite down, don't you? Uh, very hard to do sometimes, isn't it? So we see then that if we're going to taste and experience the Lord and understand who He is and understand all about His goodness, and then we're going to magnify Him. In every situation, in every circumstance, we're going to magnify the Lord. Acts 14, we're going to look at, a, uh, at an event in the life of Paul. Uh, Paul probably easily one of the greatest evangelists, if not the greatest evangelist besides Christ himself uh, that ever lived. Uh, he had an event where preaching was not well taken to. Now, in here with my family and my friends and my church people, you know what? Preaching is going to be, th this is safe turf. Th th this is an easy place to preach. Out there, it's a very difficult time to preach. And I know because I've been there and I've done that. And you know what? People do not want to hear the gospel. They want to hear a gospel, yeah. but they don't want to hear the gospel. Well, the gospel that leaves you helpless and, and, and needy and, and nothing to be done if Christ doesn't intervene. People don't like that gospel. People don't, don't enjoy that gospel. And, 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 and as the old saying goes, Paul her found out the hard way. And we find him on Mars Hill. Acts 14 and verse 15. Acts 14 and verse 15. The Bible says, 
and saying, Sirs, what do ye these things? We are also men of like passions, meaning the same stuff, the same flesh, the same rebellion. We are also men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that we should that ye should turn from your vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and sea and all that are therein. Now, I want you to see, he says, we want you to turn from your vanities, plural. You know what a vain thing is? Thinking that you can save yourself. That's vain. That, that's saying you don't need Christ. You, you, you know something that's vain? Saying, well, I'll be baptized and everything will be okay. You know what the problem is? It starts with the letter I. <laughs> I will join the church. I will be baptized. I will be saved. Well, I'll tell you this. You won't do nothing if Christ don't intervene. Right. Yeah. You, you, you'll be left right where you're at. And, and, and so that's exactly what uh, Paul was preaching on Mars Hill. He says, listen, it's all vanity. It's all about you and not about Christ. And, and uh wasn't real popular preaching. Verse 16. Who, meaning Christ, in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, meaning Israel, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. He said, even at your worst state, water continued to fill from the sky, the earth began continue to give forth her abundance. You didn't go without food. Listen, there's not a person under the sound of my voice this morning that hasn't had something to eat today if they wanted it. Now, see, the problem is today in America, we're so blessed, we get choosy, don't we? You know, uh, you know what? Macaroni and cheese, I do not like macaroni and cheese that much. I really don't. Um, if it's the good stuff, Velveeta, I like it. You know, when I, when I was a kid, and I'm not making this up, macaroni and cheese was 19 cents a box. And it had that mystery cheese that you mixed with water. And I just didn't like it. Judy ate it like a field hand. And Mom would go to work, and she's supposed to feed us something to eat, and I knew what was coming. I just walked out of the house. Uh, you, you heard her say, I was saying I'd rather go hungry. That's where I was at. And so, it's not that we don't have something to eat and that God doesn't bless the lost. It's just that we don't want it. You, you, you think this morning, if you were able to get up, walk about your own room, put on your own clothing, and arrive at this, uh, uh, at this church building under your own volition, God's been good. And you know what? He don't have to be that good to us. And, I, and listen, I'm talking to lost people too. Every lost person under the sound of my voice this morning took a, a big, deep, a, a big, deep breath of fresh air this morning. God is good. He is good all the time, every way. Uh, you can't fault my God of heaven. He's good to us. And so uh, he, uh, Paul reminds them of that. Verse 16, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways, nevertheless he, uh, he left not himself without witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these things, scarce restrained they the people that had, that had, and with these things, Scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and from Iconium who persuaded the people and, and having stoned Stephen, they drew him out of the city supposing that he had been dead. So get the thing, we have a bunch of Greek idolaters that are listening to the gospel and the Jews come on the scene, the people that are supposed to, supposed to be the very people of God, and say, hey, stone these people, stone these men. And the Greeks, being idolaters, they do it. And you know what? The, the Greek, you know what? 
the Jews give them that order because it was getting right down to where they lived. Because how, how did the Jews think they were saved? By works, exactly right. And, 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 and that just by grace was getting them exactly where it hurts the most. And they were getting gigged in a sore place. And so the Jews knowing how to rev up the Greeks, stone. Stephen knocked down. Stephen, uh, and I want you to see, supposedly he had been dead. Now, I'm not sure how to suppose someone is dead. Listen, when I die one day, don't suppose I'm dead. You make good, you make sure I'm good and dead. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Because if somebody died in here this morning, I've seen a lot of people die. First thing I'd do, I'd check for a pulse. Well, no, there's nothing there. But you know, hey, did you know this? You can be alive and not have pulses out here. Right. So the next thing I am, and Don's, Don, I don't know, Don's got, I don't guess we even want to have one in this band, so you have to call somebody. But in my truck, I have a stethoscope. And you listen real carefully. Make sure this thing has stopped its business. So I'm not sure how they supposed he was dead, but there was a physician in that group. His name was Luke. And you know what? I bet Luke knew how to tell somebody was dead, don't you? Uh, he wasn't much of a doctor if he did. And, and, and so I have to believe that, you know what? They wasn't supposing he was dead. I believe, I believe he was dead. And as the old saying go, I believe he was dead dead. I believe he was graveyard dead. I believe the life had left Paul and he was dead. You know why? Because the Savior I serve has victory over death. He gives life and he takes it. And if you don't believe that, there was a man back there named uh, uh, Lazarus that understood what uh, death was all about and that Christ had the victory over it. So Paul's laying outside of the city. Verse 20. How be it, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. Now, I want, you to, I want you to get the fullness of that, that he just got up. Wasn't no medical intervention. Luke didn't take his blood pressure. He just got up. And you know what? Because he's been un up under not his own volition, but under the volition of Christ. Under the power of God, he got up and began to do his thing again. That is the God of the Bible. And he deserves our praise. Every day, all the time, he's a victor over death. You know what kept you alive through the night? Because Jesus is a victor over death. And, and you know how you're going to die one day? I can tell you already. Now, I'm not no fortune teller. Your time will come and your victory over death is going to, is going to be over. And, and, and that's exactly how it will come. Uh, <laughs> God's grace in your time of life will be over with. That's, that's how you die. Now, uh, I want to read just a little further than that and then, and then uh, go to one more place. Verse 21, And when they had preached the gospel to the city that had uh, taught many, they returned again unto Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that he, that he must through much tribulation, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So I want you to see the way that we're going to get there is through tribulation. That's the street that we're going to travel. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord, on, uh, unto the Lord in whom they believed. And after they had passed through uh, Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they came to Attilia, and then they sailed to Antioch, which they had been recommended by the grace of God for the work they had fulfilled. And so I read that to say, to say this, 
if, if, I, if I read correctly, there were five churches started after Paul's resurrection. So you hang in there. That, that's the good God that's to be praised all the time. You know what? We read that where they were standing there were looking around him. Didn't see any mully grub, did you? Didn't say, well, I knew it wasn't going to last. That's what you saw when Christ was crucified, was it not? And you know what? I believe it was this because they had not been empowered through the person of the Holy Ghost. Remember, remember what the instruction of Christ was? He says, don't you leave Jerusalem until you be empowered from the Holy Ghost. And, and we find that now a church is empowered. I don't know what they were standing there around there saying. But they weren't giving God a hard time down the road. They're probably saying, okay, what are we going to do next? But I want you to see that <laughs> with that resurrection of Paul, they still did a lot of great work. They still at least five churches organized, and the Lord was to be praised. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. <laughs> Matthew 26 and verse 39. Matthew 26, verse 39. The Bible says, The Lord Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, He says that He, meaning Christ, went a little farther and fell on His face and prayed, saying, O Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from Me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as Thou wilt. Now, everybody says this cup was the cup of death. I do not believe that. Because you know what? He said this. He's, he, he told them, I will die and I will rise again. He already knew this. This bitter cup, as it is described in one place, is my sin and your sin and all the sin of the, uh, of the redeemed. He was going to bring sin unto himself and he dreaded it. You know why? Because he'd never experienced sin. He'd never known what rebellion to God was all about. He didn't understand being against his own father. And, and he, he wasn't dreading death because you know what? He's a victim. Why would a man dread death that we know for sure at least were raised three people and probably more than that? There was the young girl. There was the man that was already on the cemetery, on the way to his uh, cemetery in the little city of Nain. And he said, hang on a minute. And he rose the man up and gave him to his mother. And then there was Lazarus that was done riding back in the tomb. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. So... The Lord Jesus wasn't dreading death. He was dreading the experience of sin. He, he was dreading being exposed to, to rebellion to his own father. He, he didn't understand that. And, and he was dreading that experience. And then it says, uh, verse 40, And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Now, you think about your own prayer life, and I've done thought about mine, and it convicted me. Have you ever really sincerely prayed for an hour? Now, you see what he said. What did it take me? Maybe, maybe two seconds to read the statements of Christ in his prayer? So that says this to me. Prayer is more than saying words. It, it, it is spending time with the God, the Father, the great God, Jehovah. Spending time engaging with prayer, and it takes time to do that. You don't do that saying your little Roman Catholic catechism. You don't do that uh, uh, with you now I lay me down to sleep with vain repetitions, right? That's what the Bible calls them. And, and, and so he prayed like he meant business. And he prayed uh, with some sincerity that I don't know that you and I really even know about. And uh, he placed that before the Lord. Verse 42, uh, verse 41, excuse me. Watch and pray. Two commands. Watch and pray. 
that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed and said, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. You talk about getting in a situation where you can, where you can serve God is accepting the situation for exactly what it is and praising God in the middle of it. You know what? <laughs> There's a lot of things I wish about my health that I could change. But my purpose is to get in the middle of it and give God the praise. Because you know what? He knows better than I do. Hey, he, he, he's the one that saw the end from the beginning. How could I argue? How, how could I refute someone like that? And, and so then we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know huh, that we at all costs need to be in the will of the Lord. Verse 43. And he came again. And, excuse me, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, didn't say nothing this time, and he left them and went again and prayed the third time, saying these same words. Now, uh, verse 44 and verse 45. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on, and take your rest, behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he that is he is behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. Now, so do you still think he was praying because he didn't know what was going to happen? No. He knew. In fact, when they uh, got there, he said, "Who seek ye?" Gospel of John. And knock them flat on their backs. So you, you don't think he could have delivered himself if he wanted to? Sure he could have. He just never experienced sin and he, he dreaded it. And he took on my sin and your sin and your sin. And if you redeem the sin of all his people, that's where it becomes the atonement. Right. And he took that on himself, and he, and he bled himself out for him. That, 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 that is the reason. So this morning, as we look into what Christ has done, we need to magnify him. We, we, we need to lift him up. Listen, he did something for us that no other individual could do. He did something for us that no other person could, could possibly do. Uh, no other being, no other entity could fulfill, and he needs to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. Amen. Every voice that we, every word that we put out should in some way magnify the Lord. Everything that we do, right. how we present. You know, a lot of times uh, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. That's important too, is it not? Magnify the Lord. 